please note that filming text on the whiteboard requires extremely bright studio lighting. Subsequently, sunglasses were worn during the filming of this video to prevent damage to my retinas. A note on how to use these sessions. Jot down the notes as we go, so we'll help you learn the material in a more interactive way, and you can use them as study notes later. Also, in the small chance that the discrepancy arises between the professor's notes and mine, always go with your professor. They're the one grading you. Lastly, any examples or analogies used in the session are not meant to support or criticize politics, religion, or lifestyle. They're merely learning tools to help understand the material. All right, guys and girls, it's time to get cracking. Okay, so we just finished our GChem review, and that gave us a foundation for us to start building our organic chemistry knowledge on top of. So let's get started with our OChem now. And the best way to start is by talking about some OChem basics. This is where we're going to cover key concepts in organic chemistry that we're going to use for the rest of this year. Okay, so this is a really important session because we're going to apply these concepts to understand why reactions happen the way that they do. Okay, so when you look at a reaction, you're going to see one atom reacting with another atom, and then that atom reacting with another atom, and so on. And it's great to memorize all these individual steps to see what's going on, but what makes it even easier is to understand why these different steps are happening. Why this atom reacts with this atom. Why this atom reacts with this atom. And these concepts that we're going to be talking about in OChem Basics will help us to understand why these different things are happening. Because the idea is that if you can make logical sense out of what's happening and understand why it's happening, then that's much less for you to memorize, right? Because if it makes sense to you, then it's no longer memorization. And this is the key to OCHEM, you guys. If you can understand not only what is going on, but why it's happening, that's how you guys are really going to do well in OCHEM. Okay, so in OCHEM Basics, this is going to be split up into two parts. The first part, which we'll talk about today, deals with reactivity. And the second part, which we'll talk about next time, deals with covalent bonding. Okay, so in today's session, OCHEM Basics Part 1, this deals with reactivity. And what do I mean by reactivity? Well, when you look at a compound, let's just take this compound for example. Okay, so if you look at this compound, you want to be able to see where this thing is going to react. Okay, which atom of this compound is most likely to react and why? Okay, so this is what we're going to be talking about today in OCHEM Basics, reactivity. When you look at a compound, you want to be able to look at that thing and see which atom of that compound is most likely to react and why. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay. So do me a favor and pretend that this four atom compound is compound A. Okay, so one atom, two atom, three atom, four atom, sorry, you guys. Okay, and pretend that this four atom compound is compound B. Okay, so a hey, one atom, two atom, three atom, four atoms. Hey, and this is just, this stick right here is just two electrons. That's a lone pair on this atom, right, you guys, that I can use to bond with other atoms. Okay, so hey, you'll hear things like compound A reacts, it bonds with compound B, right? And so it sounds like the entire compounds are undergoing a reaction. But what this really means is that an atom from compound A, this red one right here, is reacting. It's bonding with an atom from compound B, this blue one right here. Okay, so hey, let's see how that happens. And this blue atom is going to use its two electrons, right, this stick thing right here, to bond with this red atom. Okay, so it bonds with that red atom like that. And it's just those two atoms that are actually reacting, you guys, not the entire compound. And I just want to make that clear to you guys. Reactions occur on the scale of atoms, not compounds. Sure, those atoms might be part of compounds, but it's not the entire compound that reacts. It's the individual atoms within the compound that react. And hey, you guys, this is kind of like if you stub your big toe. If you stub your big toe, most likely you're going to say, ow, my foot, right? But hey, really the more accurate thing to say is, ow, my big toe. Your whole foot doesn't hurt, just your big toe. And this is an important distinction because, hey, say you had broken your toe. You'd want a doctor to be able to identify exactly where you hurt yourself so he can fix the problem, right? Just like with reactions, you want to, to identify exactly which atoms are the ones that reacted so that you can understand why they reacted. So hey, for example, you want to, you'll want to be able to explain why this blue atom bonded with this red atom. And this is going to get easier and easier to identify with experience. And eventually, you'll be able to spot them automatically without even thinking, okay? 
Hey, but for now, there's four basic guidelines to get you started in finding reactivity within a compound. So let's write these down. Okay, so I'm gonna call these guidelines four sources of reactivity. Four sources of reactivity. And these are just guidelines to show you how to spot and explain reactivity within a compound. Okay, so the first source of reactivity we call formal charge. Formal charge. All right, and formal charge, this is just equal to the charge of each individual atom in a compound. This equals the charge of each. Let me write this in blue to highlight that. Each individual atom in a compound. And I'm going to abbreviate compound, CPD, okay, compound. So, each individual atom in a compound has a formal charge. Formal charge refers to individual charges on atoms, not the net charge of all atoms put together, okay? So, hey, this atom has a formal charge, this atom has a formal charge, this atom has a formal charge, this atom has a formal charge. Every atom in a compound has its own formal charge. Formal charge is not the net charge of all these atoms combined, okay? All right, so formal charge, this is the charge of each atom in a compound. If you want to talk about the sum of all the formal charges in a compound, you would call that the total charge on a compound, okay? So, hey, the sum of all formal charges in a compound is just the total charge on that compound, all right? But let's see an example of how you determine formal charges of a compound, or formal charge of each individual atom in a compound, and then we'll talk about why it's a source of reactivity, okay? All right, so for example, you can be asked to find the formal charge, find the formal charge of each atom in the following compound, okay? Okay, so I've abbreviated formal charge here by saying FC for formal charge, okay? But anyways, you guys, it's saying find the formal charge of each atom in the following compound. So let me go ahead and put a compound up here. And let's just have an oxygen connected to three hydrogens. Okay, so there's two ways you can find the formal charge of each atom in this compound. One way is by using a mathematical formula and this is very useful for, for when you're first starting out because you don't really need to think. You just take numbers and plug and chug. The downside to this method though is that it's really, really slow, especially if you have a compound with a lot of atoms in it. So hey, eventually you wanna be able to find formal charge the second way I show you because it's much, much quicker. But hey, let me show you the math way first. And hey, you may have seen this equation before in GCAM and it goes like this. Formal charge, Fc, this equals the number of valence electrons, Ves, okay, minus parentheses, the number of bonds, plus the number of non-bonding electrons. And I'm going to abbreviate that by putting NBEs, okay, non-bonding electrons, okay. So, hey, what this stands for is formal charge equals the number of valence electrons minus the number of bonds added to the number of non-bonding electrons on the atom you're talking about. Hey, so that sounds really complicated when you say it all out like that, but you'll see how simple it is when we apply it in our example, okay? So, hey, in H3O, or oxygen connected to three hydrogens, we've been asked to find the formal charge on each individual atom. Arbitrarily, you guys, let's just do the formal charge of oxygen first. Okay, so, hey, if we just follow the formula, we can write Fc, parentheses, oxygen. So this is how you'd write the formal charge of oxygen. And this is gonna equal the number of valence electrons oxygen has. Oxygen has six valence electrons, right? If you look at the periodic table. Okay, so six minus 
the number of bonds connected to the oxygen, which is one bond, two bond, three bonds. So a number of bonds is three added to the number of non-bonding electrons. And all this means is electrons that aren't in bonds, electrons that are in lone pairs, right? And hey, this oxygen has one, two electrons that are non-bonding electrons. So hey, you'd put two right here. So hey, six minus three plus two equals a plus one. Okay, and that's your answer. The formal charge on oxygen in this compound is plus one. So to indicate that, you draw a little plus sign. Let me do this in blue. You draw a little plus sign with a circle around it right next to that oxygen. If the formal charge had been a negative one, you'd have drawn a little negative sign with a circle around it like that. Or if the formal charge had been a zero, you'd draw a little zero with a circle around it, okay? Or you'd just write nothing next to the atom. Okay, so hey, let me erase this real quick. All right, so now let's check the formal charges on the hydrogens in this compound, okay? Okay, so coincidentally, since all the hydrogens, each of these hydrogens in this compound have the same number of bonds and non-bonding electrons, it turns out that all the hydrogens in this compound will have the same formal charge. And if you plug all the information into the formal charge formula, formal charge formula, you'll find this to be true. So let's do this real quick. So hey, Fc, parentheses H, the formal charge of hydrogen, right, equals the number of valence electrons hydrogen has, which is one, according to the periodic table, right, minus the number of bonds attached to hydrogen, which is, hey, one in each case, right, you guys? That's why I said they're all the same. Okay, so, hey, one, added to the number of non-bonding electrons, which is zero. None of these hydrogens have non-bonding electrons on them, right? Okay, so a hey, one minus one plus zero equals zero, right? The formal charge on each of these hydrogens is zero. So we leave the space next to them on the Lewis structure blank. Okay, or you could have drawn a zero with a circle around it, right? But hey, the reason I said coincidentally that all these hydrogens are the same is because not all atoms have the same formal charges in a compound just because they are the same atom. For example, you guys, just because the formal charge on one oxygen in a compound is plus one, doesn't mean that all other oxygens in that compound will have a charge of plus one. You have to find formal charges for each atom in a compound, okay? Okay, so if you're not sure what I mean, go ahead and try this example out on your own. A C double bonded to an oxygen connected to a hydrogen connected to an oxygen, connected to a hydrogen, connected to a CH3, okay? Okay, so if you determine the formal charge on each of these oxygens, you should find that the formal charge of one oxygen is zero, whereas the formal charge of the other oxygen is a plus one. And let me just tell you which is which, so you can go, so you can go ahead and check yourself when you get home, okay? So, Hey, this oxygen with three bonds to him, one, two, three bonds to that oxygen, has a charge of plus one. So I'll indicate that with a plus, with a circle next to it, right next to that oxygen, okay? Hey, this oxygen with two bonds to it is gonna have a charge of zero, okay? Two bonds to it is gonna have a charge of zero, so I'm not gonna draw anything next to him. Okay, so make sure to go home and try this on your own. Do it the math way, and you'll see that not all atoms in a compound, even though they're the same atom, not all of them will have the same charge. This one has a plus charge on it. This one has a zero charge on it, a neutral charge, right? Hey, so that was the math way, you guys. And it's always good to start out with the math way because it gives you a very structured formula for you to follow, and you get the right answer every time. The problem is though, when you're eventually asked to draw out entire reactions with compounds on a test, including their formal charges, there's just no way you'll have enough time to figure out the formal charge of each atom by hand in every step of the reaction. You'll need, be, you'll need to be able to do it this next way I'm going to show you. And believe me you guys, this way is so much easier than having to memorize a formula and plug numbers into an equation.